Good evening, and welcome to the Rob Built Hour. I'm your host, Rob. I don't know why I'm talking like that. So I just closed on two properties that I'm gonna be listing on Airbnb here very, very shortly. And I was about to start writing these listings and I thought, well, you know, I don't really have any content on the channel that actually walks you step by step through like how to create your Airbnb listing and how to write sparkling clean copy for that listing. So I thought today would be a really great opportunity to create like a step by step tutorial on how to craft the perfect Airbnb listing to, you know, increase bookings, increase conversion rates, get traffic going to your, um, Airbnb listing and uh, <laughs> it's 11.32 p.m. so I know why I'm losing myself in the news at the moment you won't. It's too late, it's much too late for that. I know that this isn't gonna be the most exciting video for a lot of you, but I will say that if you're looking to get into the short-term rental space or the Airbnb game, then you're gonna need to learn how to do this and it's really not too hard. So I'm gonna try to walk through this as intuitively as possible and give you a few tips along the way too. But first things first, if you've never hosted before, sign up with my link down below. When you do and you host your first day on Airbnb, you'll get a $75 bonus, which is really nice. I'll get a little kickback too, which supports me and this channel. If you find anything that I'm about to say valuable, it's free. It's free for you to do this and I'll be assigned as your ambassador and I'll be able to provide feedback on your actual listing once it's up and running. And just a quick note, if you sign up with that link, it works if you already have a travel account with Airbnb. It just won't work if you've created a listing and hosted before. For. So, uh, I think that's pretty cool, actually. Is that Bill Paxton or Bill Clinton? Hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. So I'm gonna do my best to keep this as concise as possible, but know that the Airbnb dashboard is pretty intricate and there are a lot of different options that you can check. I'm not gonna talk through all of that today. I'm gonna try to keep this <laughs> a nice little 10 minute video for you. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do here is click on create a new listing. Now you could duplicate an existing listing if you've already created one before, but you know, if you're watching this video, uh, you probably have it. So click next. And then you wanna type in the physical address for where you're gonna be creating your listing. So we'll go to 555 like and subscribe street i'm just kidding okay so let's go to 555 i'm just making up an address here frazy lane okay 63874 frazy lane macarthur ohio i love it okay so continue so here you're going to choose what kind of place your listing is so you'll have a few options here is it an apartment is it a house is this a, is, is it a secondary unit is it a unique space? Is it a bed and breakfast? Is it a boutique hotel? In my particular instance, it's a house. And then it'll say, now let's narrow things down. So here you can actually choose what it is. Is it a residential home, a villa, townhome, cottage, bungalow, cabin, blah, 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 right? Mine in particular is actually a farmhouse, but I don't really see that as an option here. So I'm just gonna go with a cottage. You could say it's a cottage, why not? And then confirm the type of place that guests will have. So is it an entire space? Is it a private room? Meaning is it a room in your house? Or is it a shared room? Meaning is it like a, a room where more than two Airbnb guests that are strangers, like two different parties are gonna share. So if you have a two bedroom house and you live in one room and you rent out that other room to two separate people on Airbnb, that would be a shared room. So in my instance, it's an entire place. And then is this set up as a dedicated guest space? It gives you the option to choose. Yes, it's primarily set up for guests. No, I keep my personal belongings here. So it's really just gonna depend on if you live there and you're just you know, renting it out for part-time income, or if it's set up as a full-on Airbnb. Um, I like to say that it's primarily set up for the guests. My theory here is, is that if Airbnb thinks you're serious about it and that it's 100% meant for Airbnb, then they'll push it in the uh, search algorithm. I don't know if that's true, but either way, you can choose uh, how you wanna do it. And then which best describes how you host? I'm hosting as part of a business. I'm hosting as a private individual. And it kind of breaks it down for you. So in my particular instance, I think I'm hosting as part of a business. It's the first time I've ever actually chosen that option, but, but I am a full-time real estate investor now, so I'll do that proudly. Click on next. And then from here, you're gonna choose how many guests that your place can actually sleep comfortably. So ours is a three bed, two bath. So my general rule of thumb here is that you can have like two people per room. So right there, that's six people. And then we typically put like a really nice sleeper sofa inside of the living room. That's like a pull out sofa. Um, okay, so like I said, it's a three, two. Uh, so that's right there is gonna be six. And then we can sleep two in the living room. So that brings us up to eight. So we can have eight guests. And one thing that I also wanna note, you wanna have the amount of guests that you can sleep comfortably. So just because you could cram 12 people in there, does that mean that you would want to? You only have two bathrooms. So while my rule of thumb is that two people can be in a room, I would say the max amount of people sharing a bathroom should be five. 
So this house should have a maximum of 10 if we had the space for it, which we don't, because it's only like a 13, 1400 square foot house. So for us, we're gonna be at eight. It's gonna be a little snug at around eight. Six is gonna be that optimal group size for us. So how many bedrooms can a guest use? So it's a three bedroom. How many beds? So we're gonna have four beds total. A couch counts as a bed. Then we actually break it down in here. So bedroom one is going to have a king. Bedroom two will have a full size bed. Bedroom three, a full size bed. And then common space is the living room and we have a sofa bed and then the amount of bathrooms two bathrooms or if you have like a, a half bathroom make sure to note that it's a valuable thing then where's your place located so we know it's on 63874 Frazy Lane Frazy Lane that's kind of like that's like the location of my mind my mind is on Frazy Lane at all times it feels like so once you put in your address here it's gonna give you a couple of options it's gonna put a pin exactly where your house is I like to adjust it a little bit I don't think Airbnb loves that you change it too much but also like I don't really want people like trying to find my house based off of the pin on my map. And that's actually more real as a YouTuber and as someone that discloses like Airbnbs and stuff like, you know, I try to be a little bit more private these days just cause people do show up. <laughs> more often than you think. I adjust this a little bit, not too far off. I just try to go like right here. As you can see, I'm like right at the edge of that circle. I guess that's like the buffer zone for Airbnb. And the reason I have it that way, it's close enough to where it's not really gonna make a difference other than like one or two minutes, but it's far enough away to where if someone's driving around, they're gonna really have to work for finding your listing. So once you found the perfect spot for whatever works for your comfort level, you hit yes, that's right. And then you get into amenities here. So you have the essentials, which is towels, bed, soap, toilet paper, pillows, pillows, uh, cooking basics, a desk workspace. This is a little bit loose. I don't think you actually need a desk, but I think if you have like a nice dining room table, that counts, an iron, hair dryer, shampoo, hangers, TV, heating. Yeah, so click everything that applies here. Wi-Fi, air conditioning, fireplace. Do I have a fireplace? I don't think I do. So just, I'm just gonna click, click that. Okay, and then safety amenities. Th these are all gimmies. You should have all of this. So smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, first aid kit, fire extinguisher, lock on bedroom door. Eh, I don't actually know. I don't really think it, I mean, if someone chooses my place based on that, they're weird. Okay, so what spaces can guests use? So we have a laundry dryer, kitchen, and then laundry wash, and then that's it. And then does your space have accessibility features? Not this one, but my other space that I'm gonna list after this actually does have a wheelchair accessible bathtub, which is really cool. And then from here, you're gonna list all of your photos. So I'm gonna say one of my listing tips here that I always give pretty much all the time is to just spend the money on a professional photographer and don't cheap out here. I think it's perfectly acceptable to take cell phone photos if you need to, just to get your listing published and ready to go. But spend that 150 to $700 to get an absolute pro out out there because it's gonna be the number one driver of your revenue. So please, please hire a professional photographer. It breaks my heart to see all these cute houses that people spent $10,000 on nice furniture and like nice couches and rugs and everything. Then they take cell phone photos with their potato phones. Don't do it, people. I guess since that is one of my listing tips, I actually have a PDF download of my top five listing tips for making your listing as solid as possible. So you can actually download that down in the description below. It's gonna give you some of the insights that I've learned over the past four years. So with that, let's Let's get into the photos. So with your photos, I would say the more the better. I mean, anywhere between 25 and 50. However, make sure that they're quality photos. Like, I don't need to see a photo of your live, laugh, love sign. I don't need an up close photo of your like dinner time placemats. Although the occasional detail shot is fine. Just make sure that you choose the photos that really highlight your place in the best possible light both literally and figuratively. Uh, I guess another note while I'm waiting for these photos to upload, um, make sure to have your photographer come out and shoot during golden hour. That's something that I did not clarify. And while these photos look really, really good, golden hour is just, your photos look so much better. For example, Casa Mariposa, Casa Conejo, both of these were shot at golden hour and they just, they, they just have like a certain pizzazz to them. And sometimes the photographer will charge you a little bit more to come out because it is at the end of the work day. But I will say that I do think it's worth it. Okay, so photos are uploading. Don't get too caught up in setting what order they go in just yet. Just upload them and we'll work on that in a little bit. So now we're gonna describe our place to our guests. I'll show you how this shows up. So we got Casa Conejo here. Let me highlight this. And it's gonna be the very first thing that they see that you actually physically write. Except for, of course, this headline up here, hop into the Joshua Tree Airbnb, 300 square foot tiny home. And then you have all these little features, entire home, enhanced clean, Robert is a super host, great location. Like that does show up first, but that's all auto-generated by Airbnb. So here I like to start with something nice, like a, like a 
sentence that describes your place. And then I like to get into the key features or benefits or you know those factors that people would book you for. So for us, this particular house is secluded because it's on five acres, but it's also in close proximity to a historic city and a few state parks as well. So that's what we're gonna be emphasizing here. And if all else fails, Airbnb actually gives you inspiration from the top rated listings in your area. So they show you how your competition writes it up. So you can always uh, cop their style if you want to but people usually cop my style, so I don't even need to look at that. So we don't need to watch me workshop this copy. I'm just gonna snap to it, and then it's gonna be nice and pretty, and there you go. Okay, so I just wrote this up in five minutes, and I'm gonna just quickly read it to you. Welcome to this thoughtfully remodeled 100-year-old farmhouse that lives on five acres of total seclusion. While this adorable home is the perfect private getaway for you and the family, its location, ooh, that's a typo. <laughs> I did say I wrote this in five minutes. <laughs> its location makes it easy for you to get around. You are only 10 minutes to the Potomac River, 15 minutes to the historic Berkeley Springs, 20 minutes to Green Ridge State Forest, 25 minutes to Cacapon State Park. Easy peasy. Now you can choose to add more details here to really blow out your listing. Basically, I do want you to treat your listing copy as a mini blog or a mini essay where you're really trying to convey as much as possible to me, right? So the next most important section here is gonna be your space. It does say optional, but it's not. It's not optional, I'm gonna make you do it. This is the part where you really expand on your listing and you really, I want you to be able to close your eyes and have someone read your listing to you and I want you to be able to picture what that house is like. That's how you really need to be treating the description copy because this is what sells your place. Like you want people to have zero confusion on what they're getting, okay? What they read is what they get, so make your words matter. I'm gonna write all this and then I'll read it at the end of the video, but basically fill it all in, okay? All right, now we gotta create a title. This is probably the most important piece of copy in your entire listing, okay? Make it count. I often see people use two or three words and they don't even write a title and I'm just like, how lazy are you, okay? So make it sparkle, make it pop. Don't be lazy on this and write cabin in the woods. Give me some kind of descriptor and what's the best thing about this place? Now with all that said, you do only have 50 characters. So let's mess around here. Okay, so the selling point here I think is that it's a 100 year old farmhouse. I think that's pretty cool. And it's on five acres and it's close to Berkeley Springs, but we only get 50 characters here. So we're sort of limited on what we can choose. So it takes a little bit of finessing here. Uh, I'll use my copywriting skills here to kind of bust something out. So a uh, 100 year old farmhouse on five acres of seclusion. And that's pretty much it, wow, okay. So now we'll go adorable 100 year old farmhouse on five acres, easy, okay? So I've now said it's adorable, great. It's 100 years old, great. It's a farmhouse, cool, it's on five acres. I do see people that will go like, private! I don't know, I don't think you need to like ever cap it. I used to cap stuff, but I don't really think you need to anymore. So I don't know, I could even say on a private five acres. Nope, that won't even work. Okay, so we'll just spell out five. All right, adorable 100 year old farmhouse on five acres. On five private acres. Yeah, let's do that on five private acres. So now it feels a little secluded, right? Okay, great, so next. Additional requirements, so review Airbnb requests. So this is basically asking you if you're allowing people to instant book or if you have to manually review every single request. Personally, I like to set instant book, but I feel like if you're getting started, maybe you do wanna just consider manually reviewing your first couple of requests, just so you can kinda of get the hang of things. So if you are going the instant book route, which I am in this instance, you can make them submit a government issued ID to Airbnb so that their identity is verified through the platform. And you can also require that they are recommended by other hosts and have no negative reviews. So that's really gonna start weeding out some of those, you know, guests. <laughs> Couldn't think of a descriptor. I've had a, had a lot of guests. Oh God, I've had a lot of guests. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. And then we start setting the house rules. So is it suitable for get, for kids? Yes. Suitable for infants? Yes. Suitable for, suitable? Suitable? No, it's not suitable for pets. Uh, that's gonna be a personal preference on you. Smoking allowed and no. Events, not unless I'm invited. Additional rules, you're gonna wanna put all the house rules that apply to you. Um, I usually have a pretty crazy set of rules, but you know, this is really gonna be a personal preference, I think. And then details guests must know about your home. Must climb stairs, no. Potential for noise, no. Pets live on property, no. So all of this for the most part, I think, um, none of this really covers it. I mean, weapons on property. I haven't been there, so these guys haven't been on the property, so we should be fine. Next. So if you choose not to do instant book, you can just click right here where it says, I wanna review every request, and that'll turn instant book off. 
Uh, again, that'll be up to you. But I will say like a lot of people get so scared about, oh, what if people destroy my house? Airbnb does have this $1 million host guarantee. Hopefully you'll never have to use it. I had to use it whenever someone almost burned down my A-frame, which I'll link to right here. And I told that story on the channel a couple weeks ago. But other than that, I've actually had pretty good luck with Airbnb. And then successful hosting starts with an accurate calendar. This is basically them saying, hey, if you're making your dates available, someone books it, freaking commit to it, bub. Because no one likes whenever you cancel on a guest because yeah. That's not fun for anybody. Have you rented out your place before? I have. And then how often do you want to have guests? I always like to say as often as possible. I think that triggers something in the algorithm that says like, oh, okay, they want to be promoted. So let's promote them a little bit more. If you say not sure yet or part time, I don't know. I've never done it, but I don't really feel like Airbnb really favors that those options. So now moving on to here, how much notice do you need before a guest arrives? Same day. I mean, it really comes down to your cleaners. If your cleaners are cool with a same day turn, awesome. If not, you can pad it out a bit. And then my general rule here for when guests can book, they can book anytime before midnight. In theory, the house should be ready. Guests can check in from 4 p.m. all the way through midnight. And then how far in advance can guests book? Well, I plan on owning this thing forever, so six months. Uh, you can do a year, you can do as much as you want. But for me, six months is what I'm comfortable with. And then I do like having a minimum of two nights. I think that kind of weeds out a lot of the party people. And I don't know, I, I like two night stays. No max, if someone wants to stay there for 15 years, come on, pal, I'll take your money. Uh, and then do you want to connect another calendar to your Airbnb calendar? So this would really matter more if you have like a VRBO listing that you're also creating. You can import and export each calendar to each platform so that you never have a double booking. And then set your availability. So I'm going to block the next couple of days. Just a little bit of buffer to give me some time to find out a few more facts about this house because my partner was the one that was there setting it up. So I need tomorrow to do that. So I would say in this instance, block off as much time as you need to get it ready. But I will say that giving yourself, you know, having someone actually book their first stay, like for me, if someone books on the 29th, we're hitting the ground running and that means that we're gonna be ready on the 29th, rain or shine. And then base price. This is where Airbnb tries to sell you on smart pricing. Don't do it, no one likes it. Just go with one of the third party services out there. I go with Price Labs, it's my favorite dynamic pricing tool. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down below. You'll get $10 off your first month. And I think it's just the easiest. But for now, I'm gonna scroll down here and say use base price only. And they're recommending $171 a night. That seems a little bit lower than what I had anticipated. So let me see what AirDNA puts us at. So Airbnb was actually kind of close at 171. AirDNA has me at 176, so I'm gonna go with that. Next, offer 20% off to your first guests. Don't add a special offer. It just depends on how fast you wanna get your first guests. I don't typically do it because I don't like giving discounts out because it's the worst crowds, but yeah, let's do it, why not? Why not? There's a first for everything. Maybe they won't burn me and destroy me and leave me the worst freaking reviews like every other discounted guest always does. Probably will though. Uh, weekly discount, I mean, this is kind of up to you. I typically do like a 5% weekly discount and like a 10% month long if someone wants to stay there. But honestly, I would rather not have a month long discount because I, I make more money that way. And so from here, it just kind of spits out like an algorithm based on what you chose. It tells you everything. It kind of sums it up nicely. You can hit next and then it'll kind of take you into your local laws and taxes and say, make sure to get your permit, make sure that it's legal, blah, 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 blah. It's legal for us, so we're good to go. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, that that's sort of like the, the basics of actually like creating your listing. I can go ahead and publish that right now. I guess I will. I'm not actually done making it yet, but you know, why not? My listing is live, wow. What an exciting thing at 1.21 a.m. So now that it's listed, here's where we're gonna go in and start optimizing things. So first things first, under pricing and availability, I wanna go ahead and add the cleaning fee in here. So cleaning fee on something like this, I imagine is gonna be about $175. People who clean my listing are, are paid a living wage. Yes, they are. Pay your people a living wage, man. Just do it. You're gonna be much better off if you do. Uh, extra guest fee. So typically I charge $15 for extra guests. This is case by case. So in this instance, I can have up to eight people. Um, so I'm gonna let the first six people stay for free, but guests seven and eight will have to pay that $15 uh, per night fee. So luckily for taxes, Airbnb actually collects and remits those taxes on our behalf to the county, to the state, or to some, to Biden, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who they send it to. They send it to somebody. I always like to do cleaning fee first when I'm doing all of this because if you don't, you might forget and then someone might book. And if someone books before you set the cleaning fee, then guess what? You're paying for that cleaning fee and it always sucks. It's rookie mistake. It's happened to the best of us, but just do this first. Yeah, so that'll be pretty good from here. Uh, so policies and rules, let's see if there's anything here. Okay, so policies, you, you wanna set your cancellation policy. For me, I like to go strict. 
uh, or non-refundable. I don't like people canceling on me last minute. And you know, if I have a strict cancellation policy, then no matter what, I'm not refunding you. So book at your own risk. However, you have so many, I mean, there are literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options that weren't here like the last time I did this. So mm, give me a second, I'm gonna read all of this. All right, I just read through all of this. Honestly, this is gonna be your personal preference. I'm still gonna roll with strict. Firm seems promising, but eh. So very important in your policies too is to set your checkout time. So my checkout time is always 10 a.m. Um, that's pretty standard in the hotel industry and that's standard for a lot of Airbnbs too. And then security deposit, I prefer to have a deposit of three to $500. I might go 500 on, on this property because it is nice and there's a lot of nice furniture in here. And uh, you know, if people don't plan on breaking anything, then they shouldn't have an issue paying $500 for a security deposit. People who are scared by that $500 number, I don't want them, I don't want them to stay. Sorry, if you're scared at paying a $500 deposit, not gonna happen, pal. Skedaddle. Okay, anything else? Additional rules, okay, great. So here's where I'm gonna add all of my different rules. So in additional rules, this is where you can have all of your house rules. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just using rules from a different listing. I really go overboard on some of these rules. Great. We'll save that. Under guest requirements, since I am doing instant book. So for me, I like a profile photo to be required because I just, I don't know, I want to know that they're a human and not a robot. So you'll be able to see that after they actually book. And then I think that's going to be it. All right, so info for guests. Okay, so then we go to info for guests. Um, pretty, pretty simple here. Interaction with guests, I won't be available in person. And then I always write something like, while I won't be available in person, I am just a short phone call away. Some people really do choose to exercise that route. The remote's not working. Uh, have you pushed the power button on it? Oh. It happened like a week ago. Check-in instructions, you can add that. Um, this is where you're gonna pretty much add like, okay, do you have a smart lock, a keypad? We do have a keypad. Um, let's just say that's the, let's just say that's the code to it. Keep on rocking here. Okay, Wi-Fi details, you can set your Wi-Fi. Um, so Wi-Fi network, like and subscribe, smash that button. There you go. Say that, those are your Wi-Fi passwords. Okay, great. And the last thing here, pretty simple, your co-hosts. So this is where you're gonna add a co-host or you can add your cleaner too, pretty easy to do. You can just enter their email here and then they'll have to accept it on their side at gmail.com, invite. Perfection. Great, so that is pretty much all the basics here. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is actually set the order for your photos. So I like to set the best photo first. So we'll find the best photo of my house here. Um, I'm gonna go, it's probably, it's probably this one. There we go, cover photo. And so from here on your listing, you have like five different cover photos. So again, you just wanna thoughtfully choose like the best photos in your place. So our living room is really, really cute. So we're gonna go ahead and move that. Then our dining room table is cute. And then we have some great amenities here with hammocks and fire pits. So let's go ahead and throw that in there. So basically my rule of thumb here, so I'm not gonna really hammer photos too much here, but my rule of thumb here is to really take them on a journey through your house. So really lead them through the house as much as you can. So if you start in the living room and we have every different angle that kind of shows them what that next room looks like, then the bathroom, then the next room, then what the bathroom looks like for that room and then the master and back out to the living room into the kitchen. So really kind of give them a little mini tour, if you will. Okay, so everything's squared away with the listing here. We're now in preview mode and I wanted to just take you through it. I didn't completely finish writing it out just because it's YouTube and I needed to get to the point here. As you can see here at the very top, adorable 100 year old farmhouse on five private acres. Awesome. Then we get into the actual listing description. Again, typically I would really blow this out and make this a lot more thorough and a lot more informative and descriptive and add a little bit of humor here and there, but I wrote this in like 10 minutes. So I've already read you through that first section. Then we get into the second section here called the space, which reads, every aspect of this home has been remodeled to breathe new life into this storied farmhouse. While the home is equipped to host eight people, we think the perfect group size is five to six. We're happy to host all eight, but keep in mind it'll be a little bit cozier. Is that a cloud you're sleeping on? Nope, that's just the memory foam mattresses we stock in every bedroom. Even the living room article pullout couch comes equipped with the memory foam mattress. So no need to draw straws on who sleeps where because every single room in the house is its own little sanctuary. Sure, eating at the finest restaurants can be fun, but sometimes we all need a nice home cooked meal, right? That's why our kitchen is fully stocked with all the essentials you'll need to cook you and your family a nice dinner. Guest access. 
The home is on five acres. You are free to roam and explore the land. Other things to note, there's a covered pool on the property. It's out of commission. We ask that you do not go near it. Please keep in mind that we run on septic, so please do not flush anything that's not toilet paper and scene. Um, so yeah, that is this listing. I'm gonna still be working and tweaking and really working on this probably for the next day or two, but it's not really gonna be complete for at least a month because I'm always messing around and optimizing my listing as much as I can. So with that, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, the, I don't know how long this video is. I'm sorry if it's long, but, but yeah, if it's long, then I'm sorry for providing you insane value for free. Uh, don't forget that you can download my top five listing tips in the description down below. As I said, it's like the top tips that I've learned along the way as an Airbnb host over the past four years. And lastly, if this did inspire to become an Airbnb host, don't forget you can sign up with my Airbnb ambassador link. You'll get a $75 bonus when you host your first day, and I can actually provide you with some feedback about your listing when that time comes. So with that, uh, that's it. Yeah, it's 2.05 a.m. I think I'm gonna go to sleep. I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Build. All right, see ya. You ever try to record an intro like 25 times at 11.30 p.m. and then think to yourself, hmm, what if I didn't do that? That's where I'm at.